Uh, I think it's definitely too late to change the name. Ant-Man and the Wasp is directed by Peyton Reed and starring Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas, Michael Pena, Lawrence Fishburne, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Hannah John Kamen. As usual, there will not be any plot spoilers in this review. This is not only the sequel to the first Ant-Man film that came out a few years ago, this is also the newest film in the ever-evolving Marvel Cinematic Universe. Although this film is theatrically being released after Avengers Infinity War, it actually takes place right after the end of Captain America Civil War. As we are reunited with Scott Lang in the cast from Ant-Man, we see now that he is under house arrest because of the events in Civil War, and this film is all about him trying to not only evade his house arrest and grapple with the ideas of being a father as well as being a hero and what those responsibilities entail. He also wants to assist his friends Hope and Dr. Hank Pym in a new adventure that they are embarking upon, and the mysterious villain known as Ghost shows up and thwarts any of those plans. Like I just said, this film has the unfortunate timing of coming after not only Avengers Infinity War, but also the Black Panther solo film, which both of those films for me are two of the best films in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. But it is not fair to compare this film to those films or really to any of the other films. Let's just put all of those comparisons aside for now and let's just look at this film for what it is. And this is an extremely fun and entertaining film, building off of its predecessor, building more of the relationship within these characters, but also relying on a lot of the things it built up in its first film when it comes to revolving around this really strong, powerful theme of family. This film has a lot of family elements within its plot, when it is Scott Lang dealing with the relationship with his daughter, or whether it is Hope and Dr. Hank Pym dealing with not only her mother, but his, his wife, who has been gone for quite a while, and we learn a lot about their backstory in this movie. At times it can feel more like a Hope Van Dyne and Dr. Hank Pym movie than it can feel like an Ant-Man film. And while that could be a problem for a film titled Ant-Man, it's actually much more of a benefit. I really like those two characters. I really like Michael Douglas in the role of Dr. Hank Pym. I think he's great. I think he brings a great veteran presence to this film and he is seemed to be having the time of his life. Evangeline Lilly for me is the standout out of this movie. She is absolutely fantastic. She was not only good in the first movie, she's good in this movie because now her role has expanded in the sense that she is now properly known as the Wasp. She has the costume, she has the action sequences that are all fantastic. Once again, Peyton Reed does an awesome job utilizing the shrinking technology for maximum effect within the action scenes, and not only using it for action moments, but also using it as comedic moments as well and balancing the two. This film has a lot of comedy in it. It is a much lighter film than we've seen recently in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think it works for the character and for the other characters in this movie. Once again, Paul Rudd is fantastic as Scott Lang. The relationship he has with his daughter in the movie I think is really great. The young actress who is portraying the daughter, Abby Fortson, I believe is her name, is doing a fantastic job as a side character type role. And I really hope they keep bringing her back and keep evolving that character and evolving that relationship she has with her father. It is really one of the hinges that this movie definitely relies on. Where the film lacks for me is that it almost feels too light and inconsequential at times, and the comedy just seems a little bit too much. There are scenes that feel like they are improv and just keep going on and on, to the point where I'm like, okay, let's cut away to something else. Also, when it comes to the main villain of this movie, it is more of a generic villain that we've kind of seen before. The backstory and motivations are very similar to the things we've seen. It's not like the actress does a bad job with it at all. It, that's not the case. She, I think, is very good in that role. I just think that she's not giving a lot of interesting and new things to work with. Michael Pena is back once again as 
a very fun side character who has these great comedic monologues that just go on and on or kind of wild and crazy. He's able to deliver them with such sincerity that you can't just help but laugh. Also, it's really nice to see Michelle Pfeiffer in a big budget, large mainstream film. She is a great actress whom I've always been a big fan of. She is no stranger to the comic book superhero films. If you remember her iconic role as Catwoman way back in 1992, in the Tim Burton film Batman Returns, you know what I'm talking about. So with all that being said, I'm going to give this film a 3.7 out of 5 stars. It is fun, it is entertaining, it is a more breezy, lighter film, which is a nice change of pace from the two more heavy films that we've recently seen in the MCU. I highly recommend checking this out if you liked the first Ant-Man film. They're about on par with one another, I think, when it comes to enjoyability. This film, although I think has a little more breathing room and a little more originality, and the film feels more like a Peyton Reed movie, and that's a great thing to see, because I really like Peyton Reed as a director. So that has been my review of Ant-Man. If you like this video, please check out the other videos on my channel.